What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be with Genfinity down at Consensus, interviewing a multitude of projects across Web3. Today, we have one of the OGs within the Hedera ecosystem, Patches. Uh, Ty is also, obviously, Senior Product Manager of Tokenization and Consensus within Swirls Labs. Ty, that was an interesting kind of um, move moving into Swirls Labs. I think that was fall of last year. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about your experience moving into Swirls and um, what's some of, the, some of the work that you're kind of doing on a daily basis? Yeah, it's much different. Um, it was a smooth and interesting transition. So I already had met most of the people in Swirls Labs through working with them in the community or doing things with Turtle Moon uh, or HGraph uh, as a consultant. Um, so getting interviewed by people asking me questions where we both knew I knew the answers was really fun. Uh, but yeah, since getting in, it's a, I love the company culture of Swirls. It really does resonate kind of with what I'm looking for, where best idea wins. Um, it, you know, you always kind of feel open to say and speak your mind. Uh, and it's just a very collaborative culture. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answered. No, <laughs> yeah. totally. Um, I think one of the most interesting things to kind of watch over the past few years has, can, has been kind of the evolution of Hedera and how communities are interacting on Hedera, what they're interacting with. I think a lot of that comes on the back of like builders such as yourself, like building native tooling and then it, it kind of evolving over time. What's that been like for you to kind of witness? Because I mean, the, the ecosystem was totally different three years ago to where it was two years ago. And yeah. now it's like even to take that a step beyond, you know? I think that's like the most exciting part about coming into Swirls at this moment, where we had the trajectory where we had, you know, a wallet and some pretty good UX, but we didn't have any marketplaces and then we didn't have a wallet. Uh, and then it kind of rebuilt from the ground up. We had Hashback come in, um, a bunch of different, you know, getting the basics and the, the pillars that people expect inside of an ecosystem built through the last bull run. And then from then till now, um, just a lot of iterations on building solid foundations on things that we need for a bull run. And now we have, you know, the DeFi in the last quarter has gone up 80% uh, in TVL locks. We have a lot more uh, active accounts on network. We're seeing lending protocols come on now that we have oracles. So it's an extremely exciting time to contemplate and think about the tokenization on top of Hedera when you have the pillars people expense like, or people expect like lending protocols to interact with new tokenization methods and uh, features that are coming out. So um, best time to create new innovative things and specifically for Hedera and Hashgraph, we have an opportunity to create things that don't exist anywhere else. And that coupled with the excitement and the trajectory of the community is just a really awesome time, yeah, time to be built. You mentioned DeFi obviously, um, and I know you know, this has been an interesting past, I, I would say, year because it seems like there's like segments of real world adoption almost occurring daily, like announcements across the entire right. industry. Um, thinking about like, you know, a BlackRock fund being tokenized, uh, you know, and- By Archex. By Archex. <laughs> um, but what sticks out to you as far as just like mouse, like ecosystem milestones that almost kind of validate the technology? Like which, which types of these announcements are really kind of, I guess, more exciting to you for you to kind of see? Yeah, I think, you know, the fact that we're seeing, take, take everything away from that, you know, era of the announcement of Archax and, and BlackRock Fund and focus on, you know, the interview of the CEO of that company talking about why they chose Hedera and looking at the, the fundamental parts that uh, our network has that are unique to us that make us really, really accessible to real world assets being tokenized and that accessibility being recognized by institutional funds that go, yeah, that is a good technology method in which we need that protection of not getting tornado cash sent to us. We need the quick um, you know, execution of transactions so that we can have validity in three seconds. Um, that being validated is really, really, really huge. Like Again, I'm a technologist. I do not care about price. I care about the technology being recognized by verticals that we're trying to approach and then figuring out what other assets or what other what other features of the tokenization on Hedera would allow them to more deeply lean into and recognize us as a standout inside of the industry as a valid place to put real world assets on um, and extrapolate that to ESG, extrapolate that to supply chain management. Um, yeah, and just validating the use case that Hedera has been championing for years. I think one of the interesting things like stepping outside of Swirls and, and obviously you still uh, 
like you mentioned, you're a technologist and you, you certainly like, like building kind of native tooling and things like that within the ecosystem as well is um, you do a really good explanation of uh, on-chain data or on Hashgraph data, you know, in the ordinals aspect, you were one of the first people that I saw from any other ecosystem uh, kind of dive out into the Bitcoin space and start having discussions with um, the people that were building on ordinals. Um, when you look at something like Hashinals, one fact that stuck out to me, and I'm gonna get the numbers a little bit skewed here, um, but, to, but to write, um, I think it was like 3.1 gigabytes of data directly on chain within ordinals, it was like millions of dollars. Yeah. But whenever you were, to, if you were to, you know, for builders on Bitcoin to still maybe build on Bitcoin, but leverage certain aspects of writing data on chain, like that same amount, which would have been millions of dollars on, um, on Bitcoin would only be like, I think it was like a couple grand on Hedera, which is really interesting, is, you know, Hashinals and what's kind of going on there, even though it's so new, is this something that you, you think maybe in a couple of years, all sorts of use cases will have come from it and we'll be having the same discussion right now like we're having about DeFi and stuff like that? Um, I think that's the most exciting part is that it's unknown. And so Hashinals it brought Hedera to the conversation of what does on-chain data look like? And because we already had the Hedera consensus service, it was, you know, people were like, oh, we're inscribing data on-chain. And Hedera's has just had the service to do that for a very long time. Um, so it was really easy to bring us into that conversation and, and utilize the, the positive features of Hedera to show that. And I think we're already seeing, like before the metadata key went live in HIP657, which is live now, which is great and awesome, um, it still is a unique thing where because it's a protocol, not a smart contract, it has different trade-offs. And the trade-off is it's much more secure for users, but it's not as flexible as a smart contract. And what Hashinals does with HCS6, which is dynamic Hashinals, you can both use the metadata key and the Hashinals together. So in an example, you can mint 10 NFTs that are Hashinals and they have the color blue. And they're all, they're all the same exact pointer. You do something that's super cool. You make this awesome video and you show it to a bunch of people and now it's an incentive. So then I update yours to green and I use the metadata key to say, okay, well, all of these are the same except now Ryan's, that's green. And then something happens where I'm like, okay, well, all the blue ones I want to change to pink now. And then I just update the dynamic hash and all the ones that were blue go to pink, yours still stays green. And the, the point being that there's different use cases for both of these, but together, we're much closer to a smart contract-esque flexibility. And I think that's where Hashinals and a meta protocol, and meta protocols being built on top of Hedera, the interoperability between other networks that could be built in meta protocols, um, wrapping a Bitcoin asset in a hash graph, selling that on Centex for wrapped BTC, you get royalties, which isn't guaranteed on most networks. You get fast consensus, which isn't guaranteed. You get low standard fees in USD while you could be using wrapped BTC in your asset and referencing data that's on chain on a different chain like Bitcoin. So I think there's, um, I don't know what the future is, but to me, all the pieces are there to make a really interesting puzzle when they start coming together in interoperability with other networks. Yeah, I think it's uh, interesting too, uh, when you talk about the dynamic aspects of whether it's data or tokenized data, whatever it may be. And it deals in really kind of like that participatory economy type stuff that we all talk about within crypto all the time, um, rewarding users for like meaningful actions um, or seeing how things kind of like you mentioned, if I have 10 NFTs or 10, you know, things that are written on Hashinals, one of them changing based on, you know, you have to consider like what, what is it changing on? Is it on a user's actions or did they, hit a certain goal or did they do something within the community? I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that we can think about where that goes. But um, yeah, walk us out here. I mean, it has been such co so cool to see kind of the evolution of the network over the past couple of years. What are you most excited about in the future for uh, for Hedera? And I guess to, to preface here, we're at a physical event. Are you getting, you know, what's kind of the mindset around people that are coming up to the booth and kind of asking you guys about the network? Is that changing? Yeah, I think ETH Denver is when we saw the switch where they're not saying what's, Hedera. Go ahead, we'll, 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 we'll cut it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, since ETH Denver, we've been seeing a change where it's not Hedera, it's like, what is Hedera? It's, oh, I've heard of Hedera. Yeah, yeah. And so just that alone, you know, um, there's a lot more recognition and understanding that Hedera is a network and vague understanding of what it's doing, which is just better in the industry because for a long time it just hasn't been known. And I think the, the biggest uh, thing I'm excited about is continually bringing more innovations to the consensus service and the 
um, token service. Um, had a really cool meeting last night. It was a meeting. It was a dinner for all the Hedera people and the booth workers. But I sat next to Lehman at the dinner table and talked to him for hours about all my different ideas that I have for tokenization and consensus and got to vet them very heavily. So I can't really talk about the things I'm excited about, uh, but I am going to write hips about them soon. And I think the main focus is ease of interoperability, bringing more functionality to our token service and making it more, e uh, more easy, making it easier to um, be generate revenue on the native protocol layer on Hedera without having to build an entire like Web2 architecture around it, but rather incentivizing and creating methods of gaining value for the person creating things on the network protocol layer to get that revenue instead of having to build their own payment gateway or... Yeah, yeah it's... No, I just think... It... look out for a hip. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, you know, the... Having kind of seamlessness for people that want to build in crypto or build on Web3 without having to you know, start up, you know, uh, a venture capitalist uh, outreach firm or a tech firm or any of that stuff, just having it natively kind of be easy for people to build and monetize is going to be really interesting to watch. And I, uh, I'm sure Lehman got an earful for a few yeah, hours yeah. yesterday. He's probably like, at the, at the end, he's probably like, Who, whoever that patch guy is, is just wild. But um, no, Ty, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I know we're not at a guitar shop this year, yeah. but uh, next we're going to do that next time. Yeah. It's always awesome. an honor, man. Thanks, Always dude. awesome.